Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special podcast episode of Girl, You Know It. Today, I will be doing a solo episode, and it's an exciting episode. And I will be interviewing Aluna K, who plays Dr. Tony Shakur in The Revenge of the Black Best Friend, and Motion, who is the producer and also writer on the show. So let's get started. Let me know who you are, how you're part of the show, and yeah, how did you get involved? You want me to go? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Olunike Adeli. I'm an actress. Um, um, I'm, I play Dr. Tony Shakur on Revenge of the Black Best Friend. And how I got involved is initially it was an audition um, that my manager um, had gotten and he was like, this is this is really fun. This is great. And I was, and of course I agreed. And so we we aud- we recorded it as if it was already filmed kind of deal, right? And uh, and then we and then we heard back from Amanda Paris, who um, one of the creators, and uh, yeah, that the rest was history because what what happened is that we went into um, a pandemic, mm. and we had to secretly film it for the pitch of it within the pandemic, and it literally was just me and a cameraman with Amanda on um, a Zoom. And yeah, we she created, I mean, her emotion created this, this fantastic character that I was able to just play in. And a lot of it was improv too, um, when we recorded it for the pitch. And so it was just about when can we get to shoot that? So that's how I got involved. And uh, I really love that because they said there couldn't have been anybody that uh, played Tony Shakur than me. And I, I'm honored by that. <laughs> amazing thank you um yeah I agree you played an amazing role in that I think that every episode I was like wow like you just kept evolving into this different like if every time there was a different thing that you had to do I'm like wow you just played it so well so I agree we're definitely perfectly cast for that <laughs> motion what about you um yeah well I am a writer on Revenge of the Black Best Friend I'm also um one of the co-executive producers and um had a great the great opportunity to also um work really closely with the with the writers uh through running the writers room and um working with Amanda to bring the scripts to life with our um other two really amazing writers Seneca Aaron and Kiwi Lynch and um, you know it was great to have uh, an all black writers room and and um, really dig into into the stories and the characters and and our and our own um, you know our own backgrounds of what everybody was bringing to the table and I think that it's re- it really came into a, a, an amazing cohesive piece that's also unique and different and 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 you definitely hear the different voices so um, right, working on the writing side has been has been an amazing experience thank you so much for sharing so what is the show about first those of them who have not watched the episodes yet well uh, <laughs> uh, yeah well it's it's a story about um, or show about Dr. Tony Shakur who is a self-help what you call a self-help guru for black actors and who is advocating for black actors in the um, film and television industry. And um, she has taken on this fight through many different platforms, everything from having her own talk show to starting with, with writing pamphlets and then books, leading, leading marches. And, and, and as we go through the episodes, we also get to go through her own career trajectory um uh, her her first book moves on to her let's say fifth book she what was at, at the top at the beginning um a book that was only um read by let's say black actors and passed on between black actors is now being accepted or sought after by the mainstream and everybody is trying to get on the on on the tony shakur bandwagon so we watch her in many different uh, scenarios which was really fun to to explore and write but also um you know really close to home for not only the actors but anybody who's involved in television film entertainment the arts culture 
culture um, living and life here in Canada uh, as, as you're dealing with you know, different states of otherness and different states of marginalization, but also, um, you know, really fighting to to move things forward and to have a voice. And, and this is one of one of the examples of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So do you feel so how did you both get into the film industry and how did writing it, playing it, um, how did it affect the way you played the part or even wrote the part because it was something that you drew on as you just kind of said is there something that for you when you entered the film industry like okay this is something that would be perfect for me um did you enter the film industry knowing there's going to be discrimination and challenges and whoever wants to start <laughs> yeah uh i mean i am a bit of a a, a junkie for not hearing the word can't or no <laughs> just i don't hear those words and um really my family was the ones that were mostly like no this is not the avenue this is not what we do we are from the academic world um <laughs> you know um, my mom's jamaican my father's nigerian so everybody's just highly educated um doctors, lawyers, you name, that's just all they see, engineer, that's it. And if you're gonna do anything other than those, it's a being a nurse, right? And so I rejected that whole idea and went to school anyway. I mean, I remember even my uncle said to me, um, if you're not Halle Berry right now, then you shouldn't be pursuing something. I said, what? Like, you know, like, wow, we are not the same people. But, um, I, I went to theater school and I came back and of course I knew there was challenges, but I also knew that I was going to do what I was going to do anyway. I, I already ordained myself as going to be successful and success did not equate with finance or fame. Um, it was just to dare to do what I wanted to do. And so, yes, there was lots that I drew on because I mean, there's, I mean, when you hear, uh, like the word sassy constantly and they're looking for a black person. Um, it, it's very frustrating because right. I'm, I'd rather be sent out for something that a white male is gonna go out for, right? Uh, there's no reason why I can't play that role because we're just as driven or uh, even more because that position is usually given to them and mm -hmm. not given to us. And most times we're better at the role than they are, right? So that's that was my driving force of like, I'm going to topple what this is i'm going i'm going to dare to defy the odds against me um and if i there were any odds against me it was me placing it on myself the limitations um so i drew on all of those things or when someone even comments and saying you're too exotic and really they mean too black right so i just kept going because i came from strength anyways um and now i get to use it in the art and which is incredible incredible or even acting teachers, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> and, you know, acting teachers were probably the worst because yeah. they failed to do it themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting because that also relates a lot to writing. Um, um, it moves from both the performance, but also those who are the creators being told what types of shows or what types of um, characters will be palatable to right. this audience or a wide audience uh, being told what type of voices will be able to be understood or backgrounds or can we make this a little bit more generic, even as as simple as looking at the city that we live in for so many years like you know you'd be writing and it'd be like well you know we have to make a city that is sort of anywhere usa so that people no matter where they are will be able to understand the setting and but i find that you know we've always pushed for being really specific and being and having the freedom to be specific because by being specific is how you become universal by providing a, 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 a unique eye view or point of view into worlds that others may not be experiencing, but also being a real and relevant and true voice for those who are from those backgrounds or from those experiences or from those locations or who 
who speak like that or move like that. And you also want to be able to say that you're being authentic to um, opening a space for, for those as well. So, you know, not having the fear of, of having to be generic or being, you know, being basically put towards a a quote unquote white wide audience, but being able to be specific and interesting and unique and real and 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 have those who want to hear the stories hear the stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so true. And and I appreciate that you were able to tell that story with within the show because even though I'm not in the film industry, there's so many things that were happening in certain episodes that I even relate to being in certain job positions where, you know, you, you get to experience the discrimination or the stereotypes or people stealing your work or, or things like that, because that just happens in everyday life for a lot of Black women. And so I think that that makes the show so relatable that it's not just focused on this part, but our everyday lives. We experience this all the time. And so I really appreciated that part about the show. Um, and so Motion, how did you get your name Motion? And I know back in the day, you were a member of the Unity Force, helping and educate Black youth in Toronto. Can you touch a little bit on that? And did that help um, you write the show or did that kind of spur you to, into writing the show? Okay, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, well, Motion uh, is a name that I had, I've had for a really long time. Uh, as a MC, um, that was that's been my name since I started MCing, and also, um, and then as I also incorporated poetry and spoken word performance through, you know, everything from theater and now to film and TV. Uh, Motion is is how a lot of people know me, and. Um, and it was a name that was, you know, chosen, you know, really carefully because it was a time of. Um, it's interesting you connected to Uniforce because it was a time of movement, at a time of trying to, you know, find out about ourselves, trying to, uh, like, educate ourselves and and get to know about our blackness and black culture. And Unity Force was, you know, a big organization or a big part of my life um, when I was growing up because it was youth coming together to um, to, to get educated, to read Malcolm X together, to, to, to you know, support when the um, demonstrations were taking place on the road or even to, um, to speak at hip hop concerts like KRS-One or Public Enemy and things like that. So it was, you know, a real crossover between like the hip hop hip hop culture, but also the way hip hop was also looking at at self education and 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 dropping jewels and 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 trying to get that higher consciousness. So motions are built out of out of that um, out of that name, and that's how I'm known. Um, some also called me Wendy Motion Brathwaite, and um, yeah, and how I actually started to to get into into film and and is is through storytelling is through um you know from writing lyrics and 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 recording and telling stories on, on in over beats and then more telling stories over you know sometimes a cappella sometimes just you know internally with with live music as well as with DJs but it's the storytelling the constant writing and 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 expressing you know my life, my observations, my the, the, the experiences that were going on, looking at the world, looking at the community, look at society. And but what was interesting is when bridging into having the chance to now write in for other voices, for other people to say my words was was um was a real experience, was a really great experience and a different one too. Um but you know first when I went into um what's it called um, obsidian theater into the playwrights unit and um i'd sent in i'd heard about this thing i was like okay i want to i want to learn how to write dramatically and i sent a play that i'd written and i sent some poetry and some lyrics and things like that that i had and i remember when philip aiken who at the time was the artistic director of obsidian sent me uh, a message he's like the play yeah that was all right i like the poetry come in here and do some of that 
right? And I was like, oh, okay. And so <laughs> my first play I wrote in, there was really lyrics and poetry and rapping and all of that with two characters talking to each other through that. And so he actually helped to to tell me that, yeah, you have a, something unique. You know, you have a different a different approach to theater. Don't think it just has to be two people talking. You talk the way you speak. Don't talk through the voices you want to drop. And and that that opened up a stage to start moving towards that and into what I'm, I'm doing right now. Oh, that's amazing. Are you still doing poetry work? And okay, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Throughout the pandemic, um, I haven't been doing shows on stage for the past two years, but <laughs> quite a few on, on Zoom and, you know, some just recently I, I was had a chance to be in a South African uh, poetry festival or writers festival, which was really great, um, a virtual one and, you know, just just always sharing the word in whatever form it is, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's an incredible story. Um, so you were cast as Tony Shakur, which I said at the beginning really fit you quite well. Um, how did you prepare into getting this character? Um, well, uh, I, I don't usually have like a method or anything like that. Um, I tend to go from the outside in, um, before ever learning lines or anything like that, um, it's like, who does she want to be, you know, uh, starting with like animal work and, uh, you know, who would I, like, what would be her animal? And so I started to study more of the peacock, right? Um, and <laughs> because you just want to be seen, you just want to be seen so badly. And so I was like, yes, she's definitely the peacock. And then just study the mannerisms of the peacock until eventually you stand it up into human form, but still have uh, animal elements. And uh, and then from there, it's just, you just ask yourself questions and then you see what the similar the similarities are and then you see what the differences are. and. Um, yeah, there's just so many aspects that goes into and what's her cadence, what's her voice, you know, and, um, and then uh, really do some deep work on how I was affected mm. by the industry and did tell some truths, right? Um, because then if I don't tell my truth, then you won't be able to see Tony's truth. And like at the end of the day, um, there's a duality in hum- human beings, right? So yes, she is helping her community, but at the end of the day, she wants to help herself. She wants to say F you to a system who has forgotten her. And if she's going to make money from that, she's going to. So she becomes a part of that exploitation um, because she feels she's owed. Um, and so, yeah, those are the, the, the constant um, truths that I have to admit to myself in order to get into the role of her. But ultimately she does just want to do good you know but she's human she's mm-hmm. human um and yeah that's that's how I prepared really and and also asking people like what do you think about me <laughs> and that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes when you ask people like what do you see you know or give me three uh words that describe me and uh and then whatever I get I just I add it to the character right and then just play it after all of that um research you kind of just let it all go and you see what you find in the moment so you can keep it um very present and so yeah that was that's usually my process is that there's just always a different process every time for each character it's never the same thing mm, yeah that makes sense so because you play it quite a different character um queenie on the porter so was it yeah. an easy transition or was it something that you could actually use for both characters um well the thing is um I did not have to transition from Queenie to um, Dr. Tony Shakur because in, in the middle of that was um, Lorna May playing mm-hmm. Mike Tyson's mom. Right. Um, so that was a harder transition mm-hmm. because it was immediate, like literally finish one thing on the plane to the next thing. I didn't even have time to breathe. Um, and really, like, like I said, it's, it's more about self revelation than mm-hmm. anything um, to get to certain things quickly with Queenie I had all the time in the world which was wonderful I had months and you know you work with your dialect coaches you work with your um um like the body coaches or whatnot uh because like my I studied Alexander and all of those things that I find help with uh, the technique of how to find something um 
and yeah, with Queenie, remember, she hails from the Caribbean. Mm. I don't know if many, like I, I put little pockets of that within her, right? Like I put little pockets because she has a different drive than it is to be African American or African Canadian. It's a very different drive when you're Caribbean. Mm. Um, and, uh, and also finding the ruthlessness in myself, right? Because she is, and uh, and, I, and admitting that I am quite violent. I can, I was when I was a youth, and I can be quite violent if you dare threaten any of my kids, right? And That's so right. to to put that into a character was a lot of fun because it was like I, the need for control. Mm -hmm. um, That's the similarities between mm -hmm. Tony Shakur and Queenie is that that need to be in control of everything. That's, that's why I also gave them a, the, the, the Capricorn sign, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the need to control. They're very similar, but they're extremely different. They're extremely, extremely different. Mm -hmm. um, Queenie doesn't uh, exploit. She doesn't exploit and she's a community person. Mm -hmm. right? It's always about the, yeah, like Tony Shakur, she, yeah, Queenie doesn't feel unseen at all. Mm -hmm. you you gonna see me that's her <laughs> even if I have to kill you yeah. right where Dr. Tony Shakur that's her insecurity is not being seen mm -hmm. so uh and I love that no two no two characters no two black people are uh, like the same mm -hmm. they're not a monolith right so yes. it's fun to play black characters we're all so different everybody's different it's fun it's fantastic it's fantastic so many layers to us so yeah, no, not a hard tr transition because there was another person in between, but um, still I have a process. Yes. And I did, I give them all different processes because they're different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love when people can stress the fact that Black people, black, especially Black women, are not monolith. You know, we have so many diverse backgrounds, like you just said, you're um, half Jamaican, half Nigerian, and you know, exactly. yeah, and I'm African, but didn't grow up there and and so there's different diversities that we all just bring to the table and that creates us to be so I guess significant in my eyes because that's something that we can always change and bring to the table that is different for everyone to see and so yeah I think that that's important to to show mm -hmm. and I think with with the series what was the hardest I guess either to play like the hardest episode and not in in the sense of this is a hard episode for me um but I guess kind of to challenge yourself to show that this is actually what I really want to portray and and then for you motion to to write it what was one that you're like okay this is for sure going to be a hard episode but I really need to write this hmm. well I would say um I think all of them were very challenging mm -hmm. um we we all had took on took on um, we, as a group, sorry, as a writers' room. We break the stories. Um, we started with um, Amanda and the producer she was working with at the time uh, had a had a one sheet that was uh, exploring six different episodes that would that of possible episodes of what the season could look like. And then once we got into the room, um, then we, 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 we started moving things around, what's still relevant, what, what needs to be changed, what is brand new, um, and, and, and together broke uh, the six seasons and then shared the, the writing um, responsibilities for each episode. So, um, you know, I think everyone found it both really, you know, was really enthusiastic about writing these episodes. And at the same time, they were challenging because we're doing, you know, um, you know, ironic takes where we're looking at at comedic timing, where it's also speaking about topics that could be really personal or triggering or have bigger implications and even thinking about okay who's watching it because if this person watches it from this from this um, point of view they'll get this but if somebody who doesn't get it may think this and and so sometimes you have to um while keeping those things in mind also have moments when you're just like let me just create mm -hmm. let's just create write what you want to write then let's go back to it and and start, you know, doing the debates and the internal debates and 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 figuring out the those nuances. But there's a time when you really, as a writer, have to just write. And mm -hmm. um and and then I think um, you know, 
what was also really great with the with the writing process is that each piece is its own sort of standalone piece in a way it there it, each each episode plays with different conventions plays with different types of formats and structures and and um you know even you know exploring everything from black twitter or um or a really dramatic episode horror uh you know musicals <laughs> you know um uh, talk shows like every everyone would has it has its own its own structure and so we were able to play with form and we were able to experiment with form in those ways and that was challenging but it was also it was a very great and creative challenge um so i don't know if i can actually point to one that was the most challenging but i would say getting always getting to the end your beginning and your end um how are you going to set off the the um at the whole series and the and the pilot is written by by amanda paris and so thinking about how do we want to set the series up what is the most what are the most th important things that we want to introduce about this main character and the world what's going to bring people back what are people going to be thinking like do i want to watch episode two so there's a there's that that pressure for for that first episode which you know um Olinike and the whole cast bought in such an epic way and then you have something when you look at the two bookends ep the sixth episode of the finale is so different you know and and really is is tying together all the things that seem like they were these separate spaces but then at the in the finale then um is you know which which um amanda really put her chops into bringing that that um together and and it took a while to really figure out how do we want this this season to land but also how do we want to feel about dr tony shakur at the end of the season and what's and and what are we saying about everything that we've been through together as creators as well as the audience watching it by the end and so um we also have uh kiwi lynch who who took on the 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 fourth episode which is which is very <laughs> which is also very epic you know um and was uh, if i remember it was directed by Jerome Cruin, where they're taking on the the black sidekick roles and and you know but you know they they take it also into a whole other atmosphere very comic booky and and ad, action and adventure and uh then Seneca Aaron taking on um you know sort of reality tv and 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 stereotypes and tropes and and um with the thug race which was which was also a, a great episode to work on um and and then the two that i wrote which are looking at um <laughs> the dr the dr tony shakur show now i understand the <laughs> only the the um the whole thing of the peacock i totally get it now, <laughs> right <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is it's all it's always amazing to listen to you know you know such an amazing actor like you just talk about how you get into these characters because now as we're writing them we're even thinking deeper deeper you know into knowing your process but yeah so looking at her talk show and you know on cable tv and then when it gets syndicated and then the next thing you know she we're, we're we, we have sort of have a standalone episode which is taking a sort of get out tea you know <laughs> look at a, a a black actor who's the first to die in a in a in a horror film so you know the they're very comedic takes um on things but like we said before can also be very real they can be very triggering very authentically um authentic real experiences that that people go through and many of those who acted in the show i'm sure Nike would also attest can say that the you know they've they've experienced these things and as writers and creators we have as well too and so it, it's um it's been it's that type of a journey that we wanted to take you on until you get to the the last episode which is when you're questioning everything <laughs> you know questioning everything and and mm -hmm. and um, as as um, amanda put it what happens when 
your your cause becomes your brand right you yeah. know and that's a very yeah. you know challenging difficult interesting space to be and um and and yeah we'll we'll see where what what questions the audience is left left with after that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because then you and yeah the you, yeah your your brand it ends up boxing you in mm -hmm. right and you can't be diversified diversified yourself and so yeah i think like for for me the the challenge was keeping a straight face <laughs> <laughs> and not ruining takes um you know because like con comedy is a hell of a beast and though i'm familiar with it and i love playing in that world um it is like it, it felt like summer camp you know it felt a lot like summer camp because first of all i got to work with a lot of people that i've always wanted to work with but but when in in the industry somehow they figure that like it can't you there's a quota when it comes to how many of us they're going to hire for a project it's ridiculous right and so this this opportunity gave all of us an opportunity to work together and really kind of put out firework. And so you get us all in the room and we're laughing our heads off constantly, or even sometimes not even focused when they're saying actor, like, come on guys, we're gonna get serious because we just wanna be around each other. We love each other. We respect each other. We've known each other for eons because we've been all struggling together, right? And now, um, we've got to do comedy and keep a straight face about it because the the content's very funny but very important it's, mm -hmm. it, there's levels to it right and if you get it or you don't yeah. and uh yeah the, <laughs> like, we were just laughing all the time and how do you not it's hilarious like when we um premiered it i don't think people stopped laughing all through right it was it was it was wonderful to see that reaction to know that uh we've all done something really great together and uh it's being well received and there uh, there have been people that won't watch it which is interesting i had to come across that and when you're telling somebody you know you've got to see this and it's it's really really important um uh, content and they're like yeah no that's not for me and i'm like but how do you know if you haven't watched it how do you give it a, a a chance? They're like, yeah. I'm like, and you're black, and you're not even gonna try and watch it. But I go, you know what? Um, it's not my job to push anybody to watch anything. Everybody has a right to their own opinion. But I think it's always good to at least try the cuisine before you say don't like it. But the majority have loved it, and and uh, that's what we're moving with, right? Mm, yeah, that's what you talked about, like working in in the comedy um, aspect too, uh, even though there's definitely dramatic elements inter intertwined if when you look at it as a whole, um, but having a chance to work in a room where we were, where we were doing a comedy or a, a more comedic take on something, especially coming out of working in shows like corner and yeah. uh, town like I, i've been working on shows that have a body in every you know a dead body in every episode and um <laughs> you know or a, you know a serious a serious uh legal case and um you know and and then now on porter uh you know where we have all types of racism and <laughs> and 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 you know gunshots and bodies and 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 right? um, you know and but also an amazing like historic take on like a hundred years ago and what black folks were doing in this country which is really great um to be able yeah. to work on those and you know but very all very dramatic rooms and now uh you know so they're sort of taking that that experience and and getting a chance to to um also sharpen the comedic chops has been really great. And, you know, and, and exactly like what you said that there's working with those who, who either you've always wanted to work with or who ha you've worked with and now it's full circle and then seeing them come back, you know, oh, yo, we were on a, you know, we did a play, but now you're in my, you know, in my episode and, yeah. or, you know, or the, the directors who, who came, who were um, part of the, the director team and, and the team that was brought together for this from cast to crew, um, 
and all the creatives uh, were, you know, have been really amazing. So we want to mm-hmm. always make sure that we big up everybody who has been a part of this because the 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 art of doing a series um, or a film, um, but it's it's such a big team effort, you know. Um, you know, from the creative mind, uh, in this case of of, of Amanda uh, Paris, and then, you know, bringing together your writers and then just building outwardly towards your actors. And then, you know, everybody who's on set and creating the, the looks and the scenes and the, you know, it's, it's hundreds of people come together to make to make this art form so uh it's not an easy feat to know that we've that we've reached here now it's showing um and and people can go and binge it and hopefully continue to to spread the word Mm. do you find that um the show was hard to get picked up by executive just like it was um in the episode never the hero or it was actually something that, okay, we've been looking for this. We wanted diversity. We wanted a new story. Well, um, the the first pitch for it, I believe, um, was in 2018, right? So it would, this is four years later. And the, the challenge of getting a show, um, you greenlit and into production itself is a, is a big, you know is a big journey in itself but you know being able to get a show like this i know um when amanda first pitched it she talks about that it was definitely trying to get you know it seemed trying to get the uh explain things to people that you know why this is a show that uh needs to be on on television or in streaming this is what the show means this is what the title means this is what the stories are about you know because you may be explaining to the same people who the show is is um is talking about in many ways Mm -hmm. right so but you know, as as good thing good things have it, it eventually did get greenlit and and went into production and post and and now we're able to see it and it just shows that you just have to keep on knocking down doors, but also don't wait for doors to be knocked down before you're creating, right? Mm-hmm. And before you're doing all that you can do um, to all that we can do to get our stories seen. And if it can't be on this platform, you go to another platform. If it can't, if it's not picked up, you find we find a way to do things independently. If it's on a stage first, then it's behind on a screen. Whatever way, um, it could be an audio play. It could be an audio film. It could, you know, whatever ways that we can find. We've never stopped sharing our stories so we're not going to stop now we just have to find all the creative ways and tools that there are to and platforms that there are to to get out get them out whatever scope it may be both the the large you know two hour films or the 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 podcast or the um sorry not the podcast but the web series or short form series there there's many different ways that we can do so Mm -hmm. and are doing so Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, un- unfortunately too, like the passing or the the murder of uh, George Floyd has really kind of um, helped the industry to be prompt of the kinds of content that uh, they're willing to put out, and um, you know, because that was on a global stage, and you can and and that humanized someone, that humanized someone to watch that. And um, it devastated our community. And so if whatever help that you want to give us, you know, to to put our stories out, because like now it's like we, we need to see see more about you. Would have been nice knowing more about that about that gentleman, right? Mm-hmm. That was a life lost unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. And so here we are to we're still the original storytellers. We're here to tell our story and people were willing to listen. So I'm pretty sure that opened quite a bit of doors for black creators to finally walk through um, with a little more ease. Right, yeah, no, that makes sense. And how do you feel this series will impact the black community? Ooh, um, 
well, they're going to see themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I guess, how do you hope it does? Well, that's that's all you hope for is, yeah. is to be able to have representation that, oh, yes, like I can relate. And um, and hopefully I, I hope that it creates more, yeah. you know, that do, that's all we want is that it inspires to create more. And so that's what, how I hope it's received. Yes, 100%. Um, you know, we have, for instance, directors who this is their first uh, episode of television or, um, you know, we, you know, we, we're, we're in a, it's a way that that can be providing a space for future showrunners or for, um, you know, continued growth within within the writing um, side of the industry, getting uh, the faces out of of actors who may often be on the sidelines and then, you know, but now they're being put on the on the front of the screen here. And, and so there's absolutely no excuse to say, um, oh, we didn't know, we don't have enough, or oh, we can't find, we couldn't cast. Like, yeah, right. you can, yes, yeah. you can, but also <laughs> we can, we can, we, we can, you know, we, we know, oh, these are some people we can pull in for projects. This is somebody who I could work with um, uh, to pitch a new show or um, building up new and future teams and creative teams and partners and collaborators. So there's, there, this is just one way of, of um, you know, pulling in, like we said, it could be a hundred people who are now getting a chance to work together and may work together again, you know, in different aspects. But you know, it's not it's a it's a big industry, but it's not a big big in industry here. So you will cross paths again, and we can pull pull in people. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, I know a makeup artist. I know a hairstylist who can work with black hair for this for this um you know major production or whatever. It, a lot of it was was you know, um, word of mouth and, 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 and building networks. And it's important that every time that we do this, the, this type of work that we continue to build the network and the, the careers of each other and support each other in all that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And I, and I always have this conversation because being in Vancouver, everyone's always like, there's no black people and there, but it's not true. We're here. I mean, if I, if, we were able to create um, a whole collective and hundreds of women are showing up to events. There's no excuse anymore to say, I don't know how to hire a black woman executive. I don't know how to hire this. I don't like, here's your list. Here are your people. And I feel that people are starting to see there's no more excuses to make that comment anymore. And, and even working um, on the um, the BLK, the origin story with Suds and, and Jennifer, it was, it was interesting to even see that, them going across wow. Canada. And it's the same thing. There's no more excuse like that. It's not something that you can say anymore. And, and I think you highlight that so well in the show too, of, um, of recognizing that this, we can't use that as an excuse anymore. There's so many people out there who are really telling the stories really so well. And, um, not like we need to start giving people a chance to start telling those stories because it is needed and everybody has a story to tell that some it will impact someone and our black community in a different way um and so like we talked about not being monolithic it's going to affect us in a different way so yeah i appreciate so much what you've done for um writing this series acting in this series and and my husband and i both really loved watching it together and just kind of talking about the each episode and so thank you so much for just even allowing that space for for that to be there and um i don't know do you have any last words for people who haven't seen it um and and is there going to be a second season? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, I hope so. I yeah. really hope so. Um, it would it would be disrespectful if it, if there wasn't, you know, disrespectful. Um, this is we're bringing joy and awareness, and um, I hope that it keeps going. And um, but even if it doesn't, uh, Motion and Amanda are going to keep going. And they're like they're like pioneers in our community that are um, fighting for a, a cause that's bigger than themselves. And they're creating um, content that is, is fun and fresh. It's, it's very new and it's, uh, and it's important. And um, they're not gonna stop doing it. So we're always gonna have stuff that we, we can 
expect from them um, to move our Black community forward. And I think that's, it's wonderful to know that we have um, advocates like that um, for the art and, uh, I'm 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 not nervous. <laughs> okay, I'm not nervous because I feel like we're all in good hands. So you know, shout out to them for that. But yeah, I'm gonna put that in the universe, and I'm gonna ask God that's going to happen yes. um, because I'm finally getting to do content that means something to me. Love it. I love that. Yeah. yeah, and 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 definitely the same to the superstar here. Uh, we've we've been talking about in the past maybe three years we've we've now had a chance to work on four um projects simultaneously um Achilles escape uh with with charles officer and we've done some other ones in and and now with with revenge of the black best friend mm -hmm. and one thing that also came to mind as we're looking forward is that i'm feeling that this is also opportunity to be shining light on those shows uh, who over the past maybe 20 years have mm -hmm. really kicked down the doors to make um, this show uh, possible, you know, like looking at, you know, anywhere from what's, you know, Trey Anthony's show um, of comedy to like a uh, lot, lot of mercy back in the day, you know, like, you know, there's been a few uh, and that that have grinded you know in 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 the sea uh, to to be able to be um seen and now you know digstown and one of the first shows to to feature a black woman lead um and and also highlighting nova scotia and now with porter with this oh my gosh like really epic beautiful cinematic you know uh dramatic show uh, and, and and all those those black actors and story makers who are out there they're in 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 the other shows that are that are taking place and making a, a putting our faces out there on the screen and our pens on the paper. So, it, 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 you know, we just have to keep on going back, binge watch those shows, see where we're coming from, so we know where we're going, yeah. and and um and like and like we said before, just let's keep on creating because we know that's in in our innate nature and and, and producing. And uh, in whatever capacity that we can, and continue to collaborate and bring each other up. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time, and uh, we'll continue to do so. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so you. much. Yes, that was beautifully said, and it's true. Continue to collaborate and creating like that is right there. That's perfect because, and I think that's the challenge sometimes um, for some people that I know that are creators is you kind of feel alone and then you don't realize that you can collaborate in your storytelling and you both have different gifts and different things you can offer. So it's a great reminder for a lot of people. So thank you so much for coming onto our podcast. It's been a pleasure and an honor to hear your stories and for you to share everything that you did share. And um, I'm excited for people to hear this episode. I'm excited for everybody to watch the show if you haven't yet. Um, I mean, if this doesn't inspire you to watch it, I don't know what does. So thank you so much for joining me and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.